Okay. Good afternoon and good evening to those who are in the East and uh, uh, welcome everybody to our uh, Uh, flexible opening. Now I am speaking. I'm your host, Dr. Nibras Al Hamdani, and I will introduce our uh, our guest speakers, uh, uh, Dr. Ayad Imad and Professor Rabia Rodwan. Each one will start with a uh, uh, with a talk about spectroscopy step by step introduction. This is for Dr. Ayad Imad, and for uh, Professor Rabia Rodwan, it will be a comparison between reusable uh, URS and single use flexible URS. Uh, after each talk, there will be a poll for question. You, you can answer it. And at the end of the webinar, we will have your, your answer, your questions to be answered at the end of the webinar. Please put your uh, uh, questions and which talk, uh, professor you want to ask in the box of Q and A, not on the chat, please. And I will... Uh, I will try to questions. If the time is not allowed, we will answer it uh, uh, definitely individually. Thank you again for your attendance, and we are uh, hoping you enjoy this meeting. And we will start with the professor, uh, Dr. Ayad Ahmad. Uh, Dr. Ayad Ahmad is uh, MBBS, MCH, PhD urology. He's associate professor of urology, head of urology department at Cent Central Private Hospital and NMC Medical Center in Sharjah. United Arab Emirates uh, for the last 18 years, practicing careers from 2011 and after training and fellowship in India. He is member of the American, European, and Arab Association of Urology. His lecture is uh, uh, flexible uh, urethroscopy step by step introduction. Please, Dr. Ayat, the podium for you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Nebras, for introduction. Uh, uh, good evening, everybody. It's my honor, my pleasure to be today with you in this webinar. And I hope it will be a, a very successful event. So let me share my screen. One second. Can you please see my screen now? No. No? Still not appear your screen, uh, Dr. Ayad. I'm trying. Uh... One second, please. Oh, share the screen again. Now, can you see? Yes. Now, yes. Now, yes. Please proceed. Okay. Uh, so uh, today, uh, my talk is uh, a flexible urethral endoscopy, step-by-step introduction. Uh, as you know, the stone disease is very common, especially in this part of the world. Uh, many reasons behind that, but the main reason is the hydration and the weather, what we have in our region. The modalities of uh, stone treatment, uh, it is clear for everybody. Everybody knows that PCNL, ESWL, and retrograde intrarenal surgery. Uh, honestly speaking, uh, is WL in the last 10 years uh, slowly, slowly going down uh, for many reasons. It is not 100% clearance uh, uh, stone uh, free rate. Uh, it is machine dependent. Uh, in fact, there are uh, good results uh, with the latest machines. Uh, they depend on the technician, um, uh, difficult uh, to perform in some uh, categories of patients. 
That's why uh, is WL slowly, slowly going down. PCNL is a very strong modality, very strong option for treatment of uh, difficult stones with a new modifications like mini PCNL and nowadays super mini uh, PERC. RIRS is our main concept now. <clears throat> So a little bit, we start uh, talking about anatomy. Uh, why anatomy? Because we need to be oriented, oriented intra, uh, renal, in the intra-renal anatomy. Because the anatomy, what we know, uh, it is not very important, what we know from medical school, not that much important as endoscopic anatomy for performing retrograde intra-renal renal surgery. So we need to know this kind of anatomy which we started to know from maybe after 2006. Before that, it was difficult for anybody to go inside the kidney and evaluate all calyces and see what is going in inside the kidney. So uh, to be oriented, this is one second, to know the neighboring structures uh, susceptible to energy because any damage of them can, be, can cause a disaster. So a quick talk about, and a quick reminder about the anatomy because it is our roadmap. Uh, to the uh, uh, to the collecting system, uh, as you know, for uh, uh, for uh, RRS, important is the uh, pelvic calicial system, not parenchyma, as it is important for PCNL. So urethra, male uh, male urethra uh, size six to eight millimeter, it is equal to 18, 24 inches. Female six to seven, 18 to 23 inches. Important structure here I would like to highlight is prostatic urethral angle. In normal conditions, it is 48 degrees plus minus 13. So in some conditions, uh, in some uh, especially elderly patients, the high, bl high bladder neck elevated um, uh, due to the prostate or due to other reasons that will cause difficulties in insertion a ureteric access sheet. It can, it can buckle, so it is difficult. So we have to remember the structure, prosthetic urethral angle. We have to evaluate our patients properly before going to the procedure. So in case we have such a patient, what should we do if the, if the patient has big prostate, high bladder neck, and we cannot insert our ureteric access sheet? Shall we proceed for resection of the prostate without concern? Of course, no. There is a trick here. Uh, what we do in these situations, we load the ureteric access sheet over a rigid ureteroscope, 4.5 fringes, and going directly under vision inside the ureter, leaving the ureteric access sheet inside and coming out with the, <clears throat> with the, ureter, with the ureteroscope. Uh, ureter, endoscopically, ureter divided to two parts. Uh, the above iliac vessels and below iliac vessels. All of us, we know the constriction areas, but I would like to uh, highlight two points here. Narrow part down and thin part up. Narrow part and thin part. So all the problems happens here, can happen here in the uh, vesicoureteric junctions. It is a tight area and it is not elastic. This is the problem. So on the upper, uh, just below the uh, pelvic, uh, the PU junction, it is very thin part, and here can happen also problem because it is a weak part. So uh, we should remember this, and we should remember also that the ureter is not straight. It, it have a lot of kinks, so to bypass this with, um, with the ureteric access sheet in non scented patients sometimes can cause difficulties. We should remember also this scenario, what we call fish hooking ureter, when the ureter making like J. So it is also difficult to insert a ureteric access sheet. So all this reminding, uh, I'm, I'm reminding about this um, uh, uh, anatomy uh, uh, points of view, just to be aware that the patient should be evaluated properly before the operation. So in case we have such a patient, probably, probably the stenting for um, like 12 days will be a good option. Caliber of ureter intramural part, as you can see, is a very tight area, 1.5 to 4 mm. It is equal to almost six French. After that, the ureter is a little bit bigger uh, in the abdominal part, pelvis part, then again tight in the PU junction. So the thinnest part is uh, just below the PU junction. <clears throat> So coming to pelvic calicial system, as we know, this is what we need to know. There are a lot of uh, options uh, for, uh, for distribution of the calicial system. In normal, they are from seven to 13. They are different, as I mentioned, anatomical uh, changes uh, like Biffitt system, uh, like uh, uh, changes in the, uh, 
in the distribution also of the Kali cell system. As you can see here, important for us to know and to study this angle, what we call infant dubula pelvic angle, should be more than 90 degrees to be um, able to reach to the lower calicial stones. Infant dubular length important and infant dubular width also important. How we can know, uh, predict this preoperatively by doing a three dimensional CT scan with reconstruction? It can guide us preoperatively. And intraoperatively, of course, we our GP our uh, roadmap is to inject uh, retrograde paleography, and we can evaluate these structures because this is very very important. Uh, here is the endoscopic and fluoroscopic imaging of calicial system. As you can see, the calices are different: uh, uh, upper, lower, middle, uh, anterior, posterior. So they are different and. For retrograde intranal surgery, surgery, the most important to be oriented in these structures because, because if you are starting to you, you, uh, you can lose the orientation inside the PCS. So in case, in case that you are inside the kidney uh, doing retrograde intranal surgery and you lost your orientation, you don't know where are you, uh, as I mentioned, roadmap, you have to put GPS. What means GPS? When you lose your, for example, you go somewhere and you lose your destination by putting GPS, you can find it. Our GPS here is retrograde pyelography and using radiography. So we inject contrast, then we can find and easily uh, change our location and find our target. So retrograde pyelography and uh, uh, fluoroscopy, of course. So what is the definition of retrograde internal surgery? It is surgery within the renal pelvic calicial system and parenchyma performed using instruments introduced in, retro in retrograde fashion uh, through the ureter and lower urinary tract. Advantages of this procedure, more proximal ureter and intra-renal collecting system, more easy, easy, easily accessible than conventional ureteroscopy. It is a procedure which should everybody, every urolo urologist master, master this technique. Uh, I do understand that in many countries in the world till now, still they don't know about this procedure, unfortunately, due to many reasons, but, <clears throat> but it is promising procedure and everybody should know it. It is easy to learn, of course, need training. Uh, to master it, and uh, we should remember all the time our main problem with uh, uh, ureteroscopes, I mean with the reusable scopes, is the care. So care is scopes are very essential. We'll skip uh, history. So to master any technique, uh, we should understand the indication and we select the cases, knowledge of the problems that can happen, that can encounter during the procedure, then troubleshoot them. Knowledge of the com complications, how to identify, prevent, and manage the complications. And if you do the same task repeatedly every day almost, so then you can master the technique, you will have more experience. And my advice also to record and review your own procedures uh, then you can uh, see where are you did some mistakes maybe, then you can correct yourself. And in this case, if you do this daily, you can uh, master the technique. <clears throat> Indications for retrograde internal surgery, they can be diagnostic and evaluation, diagnostic evaluation and localization of hematuria, evalu uh, evaluation and localization of positive cytology, evaluation of filling defects seen on contrast studies, investigation of positive cultures localized to the specific urinary tract, surveillance for TCC cases of upper tract managed endoscopically. In the therapeutic, of course, this is our uh, endoscopic lithotripsy treatment of upper tract urethelial uh, transitional cell carcinoma, removal of foreign bodies, treatment of PU junction obstruction. Contraindication, we should also bear on the mind all the time that patients with high fever, with acute pyelonephritis, should not, is, is not a good candidate for this procedure because we are exposing the patient to the risk of urosepsis and septicemia. So the best thing, these patients can be managed with, uh, uh, with the nephrostomy or the, with the drainage. So that is very important. Pre-op evaluation of the patient, of course, physical examination, uh, patient history is uh, top important because uh, as mentioned here, anatomical and congenital abnormalities may complicate or prevent retrograde stone manipulation. 
patients with anticoagulants uh, as as uh, maximum we can discontinue if possible of course in fact the urs can be performed with patients taking anticoagulants uh, one important thing in pre-op evaluation three-dimensional ct scan with reconstruction it is important to see to assess the stone load location and, I, and uh, as I mentioned before, the anatomy of pelvic kali cell system. Urine culture and sensitivity is very important to avoid taking patient with infection in the urine. So what accessories we need for RIRS? We need accessories for better access, accessories for extraction, accessories for biopsy, stents, and others. Uh, these accessories or instruments, as mentioned here, we need a flexible, uh, a good designed new flexible ureteroscope. We need a source of energy, which is a whole myomiag laser and recently a thelium laser also can be used. Uh, flexible accessories, including guide wires, dilators, access sheets, baskets, graspers, ureteric catheters, and forceps, video camera unit, and fluoroscopy unit. This uh, picture from my operation table, as you can see here, I have dilators, ureteric catheter, uh, semi rigid ureteroscope, different types of ureteric access sheets, uh, double lumen catheter, uh, and different types of guide wires. Position of the patient for the procedure, it is a standard lithotomy position. The leg contralateral to the side of interest is slightly extended and hip abducted. This allows minimal angulation of the ureters. Anesthesia, it is also important to know that a procedure uh, preferred to be under GA, of course, with a low ventilation volume. If you see the respiration rate is high and the patient and the patient breathing and that causing disturbances for you to break the stones, please request your anesthetist to make a low ventilation volume. Then the, uh, it will be more easier for you. Um, it will be easier to uh, proceed with uh, lithotripsy, with the laser lithotripsy. Again, this is from my operation table uh, theater. This is my laser, what I use, and this is the patient with the position. So the first, uh, our tool, as I mentioned, a flexible ureteroscopes. There are different in the markets. Uh, Dr. Rabia today is going to talk about the differences between them, and he's going to make a comparison. We are not going to touch that uh, part. So uh, as you can see here, fiber optic one, digital scopes, and uh, flexible uh, uh, dis disposable single use scopes. So in any scope, what we need? We need a maneuverability, user friendly, no cross infection, durability and cost efficient. Uh, currently, as I mentioned, there are two types of scopes, uh, fiber optic and digital. What is the difference between fiber optic and digital? The difference between them is the image rely and light transmission. In fiber optic, uh, optic uh, flexible ureteroscope, light and image are transmitted in analog format through the fiber optics bundles. While in the uh, digital scopes, there is a tip on the chip, uh, so the picture using two systems, CCD or CMOS, uh, the picture will be transmitted from the chip to the processor, then, then to, the, to your uh, screen. There is no uh, camera using in the digital scopes. As you can see here, this is latest scopes. Uh, this one from Olympus, I think. This digital one, uh, as you can see here, there is a combined light and camera court. While here you can see light separate, camera separate, camera head. And this also Flex XC from stores. That is also a digital ureteroscope. So digital versus, uh, it is, um, uh, as you can see here, digital uh, scopes. <clears throat> have better image quality, while fiber optic have better end-tip deflection, providing better access to sharp angle Kelly cell system. Digital uh, flexible ureteroscopes eliminates the need to, att to attach camera, allowing for less cables, uh, quicker setup, and less weight, uh, which is advantageous in, in long cases. So it is uh, for digital, better image quality, improved contrast resolution, color discrimination, lighter scope, less cabling, and improved ergonomics. So uh, flexible ureteroscope, uh, the standard fiber optic scopes, uh, they have different size. There are a lot in the market. Uh, 
the, the range from 6.7 on the tip to nine flinches. Uh, remember, please, there's active, def uh, active deflection or dual, what we call dual deflection mechanism up to so 270 degrees uh, in either side. Uh, primary, secondary uh, deflection. Secondary deflection will be passive and active. Active secondary deflections allows better maneuverability. Working channel for almost the scopes is the same. It is 3.6 flinches. Allow it to introduce uh, maximum up to 2.2 flinches the accessories. So please remember that passage of any excess accessory like laser, basket, um, any uh, working instrument may be difficult, not maybe, it is difficult when the scope is maximally deflected. So when you are watching the lower calyx, you try to withdraw your scope, make it straight, then introduce your uh, laser fiber, for example. So uh, because we need to avoid uh, the damage of the scope. So the damage, if, if the scope is deflected and you introduce laser fiber, the damage will happen in this part. If you uh, uh, fire the, the laser, you will have problem also in this part at the tip of your scope. And uh, these scopes are very gentle and ve you know, they are very, uh, uh, very soft and very gentle. So if you deal with them uh, forcefully, you can have more problems. And recently I have seen uh, 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 a paper from Canada, I think, about two retained uh, pieces of the scope inside the patient. This part, all soft part is gone completely inside the patient and was withdrawn by doing uh, uh, PCNN. So we have to be gentle in dealing with these uh, scopes. As mentioned, this, uh, this companies, uh, Olympus, Stores and Wolf, they are producing uh, uh, um, uh, reusable scopes. Um, they are all uh, below nine flinches in the shaft and in the tip. Except uh, Wolf, uh, it is uh, actually 9.9 .9 flinches because there are dual uh, channel in this uh, scope. It is difficult to use in a 10, 12 access sheet, so it uh, needs a bigger access sheet uh, to use this kind of uh, uh, URS. So once you have, uh, once you uh, start your procedure, you have to evaluate your scope. You have to evaluate your scope for the movements. Actually, there are three or four movements, no more. Uh, up and down movement, up and down movement, controlled by thumb. It is, of course, going to show you logic and anti-logic scope. Uh, side to side, that we call macro rotation, uh, external rotation, external rotation, and internal rotation. And don't forget there's micro rotation also uh, from the shaft of the scope near the access sheet. That is micro rotation you can use together with your macro rotations. That will give you better uh, quality of the image. And plus the, the last one is forward, backward. So up and down, side to side, and forward, backward. These are the, the important movements we need, we need uh, to use uh, to do while using a flexible utroscopy. Laser once introduced should be locked because there is risk of firing inside the scopes and damage the scope. Basket to be handled by assistant. Just here showing how to deal with the scope. So as, as showing here, first evaluating the scope, this is single use scope from Pusin. Uh, it is uh, giving a very high quality, very high quality of the image, evaluating the scope, uh, learning what is you in your hands, uh, see uh, seeing it is logic, anti-logic, American, European mechanism, as they are calling, left, right. You have to see this all movements before you go inside the patient. After that, you insert it inside and uh, evaluate properly the pelvic calicial system anatomy. So here the assistant is connecting. Actually, we are talking about the basics. That's why we are starting from here. This is the irrigation system, hand assisted. That's what I'm using. I don't use any automated pumps. We use this kind of irrigation to maintain the uh, intrarenal pressure. As you can see here, there is a good outflow from patient coming from the access sheet. And uh, our scope is going inside. Uh, going through the access sheet to the 
pelvis. Sometimes there is difficulties in this part. You have to uh, negotiate it, then uh, entrance uh, will be easy. Actually, these are all non-edited videos. I, as you can see here, uh, you can see the stone. The quality of the image is perfect. Uh, you can perform any lithotripsy. The stone, as you can see, looks to be hard. But uh, my advice, once you see the stone, do not proceed immediately for uh, see the movements, right, left. And one micro, micro movement uh, near the, uh, from the shaft, near the axis sheet. Uh, you have to evaluate all pelvic chelicel system. Do not go immediately for, uh, for lithotripsy. So evaluation of all chelicel system is important. So now we are leaving the stone and we are going to see other chelicel chelices. So because of the time, I'm going to skip here. Then after that, proceeding the laser lithotripsy. Prevention, how to prevent your scope damage if you are using uh, 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 digital or fiber optic, laser uh, should be protruded out all the time. So lock the fiber uh, properly, stand by and ready uh, mode should be there uh, when uh, necessary. Uh, no insertion of the laser and bent scope, excessive angulation to be avoided, leak test to be performed if positive uh, uh, report. And important thing, sterilization. It is very important thing. You have to uh, train some of your st staff to deal with this delicate scopes uh, and uh, uh, do a proper sterilization, whether it is uh, plasma sterilization and in some places they are doing chemical uh, sterilization. This uh, slide from Oliver Traxer, as you can see here, the showing here, the part of laser fiber which we need to see. This is one-fourth of the image. One-fourth of the image, we should see the laser fiber out. If less, it will not be okay. If it's more, it will also not good. So one-fourth of the screen, you should see your laser fiber. So going, uh, moving to uh, next, which is the machine of uh, the source of energy, which is uh, laser. Maria, you have the three minutes, please. Ah, three okay. minutes. So the laser fiber, uh, the, the laser, uh, holmium laser shown to be uh, very effective for all kinds of stones. The laser delivered uh, via quartz fiber uh, to the surface and absor uh, absorb, and then turned into a heat uh, energy that pulverizes the stone into dust. So uh, here, very important uh, parameters for laser setting is energy, frequency, and pulse duration. This is very, very important for everybody to know the setting. So energy measured by joules, uh, by here frequency by hertz and pulse duration by microseconds. So uh, fibers, there are different types of fibers, uh, 365 uh, and of course we don't use for flexible, we use 200 micron. Now going to the setting for dusting, we use high frequency, low energy for fragmentation, high energy, low frequency, popcorn effect, high energy and high frequency. This is, the, uh, this is a very good image here showing the uh, standards of the setting. Of course, this is not for all kind of the stones. Sometimes you, go, you need to go higher and less. So for dusting, uh, as you can see here, long pulse, energy from 0 0.5 maximum to one, ideal is 0 0.8. Frequency, we reach up to 20 for soft stones, but if we do pop dusting, we can reach up to 80, up to 80 hertz. Uh, the only one indication for short pulse, it is a fragmentation. We don't use short pulse for any other purposes. Short pulse uh, mode only for fragmentation. For all others, we use uh, uh, long pulse duration. Uh, different types or different techniques of uh, dusting the stone. Uh, there is painting, chipping. So painting, when we do, uh, uh, they call it also dancing. So when we do the surface of the stone and slowly, slowly all layers will go and chipping when in harder stones, when we go to the edges of the stone and this popcorn mechanism, popcorn of course, technique and uh, fragmentation. And for, because of the time, I'm actually I'm going faster. 
two phases of dusting. One is contact laser and the other one non-contact. Non-contact when we see bigger fragments and we need to uh, make them very small dust. We do, uh, uh, as you can see here, popcorn technique. So this is effective because working in a small calyx and almost touching the stones, not 100% touching, you should be very close to the stones to, to perform popcorn. It is not effective because the, probe, uh, the fiber is far away from the stones. So, uh, and also big place like, uh, for example, in the pelvis or big calyx, it will be an effective technique. Uh, here giving some tricks about how to, uh, what to do with the stones. So once you cross the pil uh, PU junction, as I mentioned, you have to evaluate your pelvic calicial system. Small stones, uh, preferable to push to upper or middle calyx. Small pelvic stones. Big pelvic stone, of course, you have to break it inside too, then you can move it upper, uh, and don't forget the head should be down. Upper calicial stones are the best. Uh, to do, uh, it is easy location. Middle calyx you can break in situ. Lower calyxal stones try, try to relocate to the upper calyx. If not possible, break in situ, then uh, relocate to the upper calyx. But for starters, for juniors, I would recommend to start with diagnostic with pre-stinted patients, then slowly, slowly go into the small stones. After that, they can do bigger stones. Guide wires, traditionally we use uh, two guide wires, one working and other one safety. Uh, so dilators, <clears throat> these are the di dilators, what we call them Teflon dilators. They are from size eight to number 16. We dilate from eight to maximum to 14, but it is not routine. Some patients need, if, if the, the, the orifice is a small, no need for dilatation, just put a stent and come out uh, and see the patient and do the procedure after like two weeks. Uh, other, uh, this is other way of dilatation, double J stenting, semi-rigid deuterotroscopies. Also the inner dilator, the inner uh, obturator of the access sheet can be used also for dilatation. Balloons, I don't think anybody nowadays using balloons. Now the question, do you dilate pre-stented ureter? This is the question for, uh, uh, do you dilate? Uh, for me, I don't dilate. I just go with a semi-rigid scope just to evaluate and see what is the going on inside. A short video here showing how to do, uh, to introduce the uh, dilators. So, yes. Okay, we'll skip it. It doesn't want to skip also. So it seems, uh, no, no, it, it's a problem with the video and I cannot skip it also. See? Okay, because we are time, this time is, is out, but we are recording it, so we can send, uh, send it to the audience uh, after. But if you have to conclude, because we have another lecture to attend, so please okay. uh, so, continue uh, conclude yes. without the video. Yeah, okay. To conclude, um, uh, pre uh, stinting after uh, uh, when you do the uh, lithotripsy, stinting is not uh, not mandatory in all cases. If you see non complicated, there is no uh, no bleeding, no hematuria, uh, there is no any um, uh, suspicious of uh, any damage to anything, so no, no need for stinting. It is as per guidelines. So to conclude, uh, retrograde uh, intranal surgery is replacing many other modalities of treatment, and it is a very promising um, uh, modality for treatment of uh, uh, renal stones. Thank you. This is, was all for, from my side. Um, okay. Because of the Thank time- Thank you very much, yeah. Professor you. Ayad. Nice lecture and very interesting. And uh, uh, unfortunately, the last video we couldn't see, we may, take it from you later and uh, we uh, put it on the link so that then all the benefit of it. Uh, we have uh, uh, for you four questions. They will be leave it till the, you can read it from the uh, Q&A box and you can write for them answers or you leave the answer till the end of the webinar. And okay. we have a poll for uh, questions regarding your lecture. This is to the audience. Uh, we have uh, uh, this uh, uh, this poll uh, in your clinical practice uh, 
in your clinical practice, how often do you use Excel sheet? Every case, frequent, sometimes, never. I want the audience to answer a single, single uh, answer. And the other question is, uh, in your clinical practice, in the case of post uh, URS UTI, do you consider the cross-infection of reusable scope as one of the reasons? So either yes or no. Uh, please start. We have one minute for answering the, uh, for the question. Thank you. Starting now. Okay, now end the polling. We have 63% uh, for the first question. Uh, use frequent uh, use of access sheet and 21% uh, in every case. And we have 13% uh, for sometimes and never by 4% of the audience. Regarding the other question, which is uh, you consider the URS UTI uh, uh, cross infection of reusable uh, scope. We can see that 67% uh, answer yes, and 21% uh, 20, uh, not enough information, and 13% no. Thank you very much for your uh, answering. And now we will shift to the other part of the webinar. We have lecture for uh, Professor uh, uh, Rabia Rudwan. Now we will, uh, uh, we will start with the Professor Rabia. Professor Rabia. Uh, Rudwan is the head of urology department, University of Sheikh Khalifa International Hospital in Casablanca, uh, University Mohammed uh, the Sixth of Science, and he is the president of uh, Moroccan Indo Urology Association and also president of another uh, association, regional. I didn't, I didn't uh, remember the name. I'm sorry for that, Professor Rabia. Are you are with us now? Professor yes, Rabia, uh, thank you. Yes, thank please. you. Podium uh, for you. My you have 20 minutes for your lecture. Thank, thank you, you Mibras, my friend. And I will to first of all, I want to thank uh, Pozen uh, Society for this uh, this webinar, to have this opportunity, and to and uh, and uh, good good evening for all colleagues from uh, for all the all country. I want to sh to share with you our experience in uh, Morocco, in the uh, University Hospital, Sheikh Khalifa. As you know, as you know, that, that the evolution for the surgery, like the surgery in all urologic diseases, you have, you have a, a good, a rapid uh, evolution for stone treatment. You can do in the first, in the first area, by, by open surgery, by, Eritroscopy, rigid, laparoscopy, and endoscopy. And if the, the future is the minima, minimally invasive surgery, so you can do, you, you can look in now for the win, for the treatment for the stone or the stone by, by many invasive surgery. You can micropedency or eritroscopy with evolution. It will be sure in the future to have some results. So our experience, small experience, just we begin for uh, for uh, one year about uh, iritoscopy, uh, 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 scope, not uh, conventional iritoscope. So you can see the, the, the some with the age, you can look for the age, sex, and the operating time, used for the access and the bypassing by G stand. About 32 uh, cases for kidney stone. Uh, all the patients have benefits for by your scanner, you have to see the localization for the stone and for anatomic for the, the calis, like my friend, he might have uh, told about that. You can, you can precise the size, location, and the number and density. 
all the other people will be with under general anesthesia, uh, it's a good deal. This is used for all patients for this, this area, for this patient, single use otoscope. By posing, what is, uh, with, uh, with the laser, it's uh, olmium, uh, luminous, uh, between 1.6 to 20. Uh, for the stone, the stone at the pelvis or the upper calicial, you cannot turkey a significant deflection of the otoscope. The fiber was used in 300 and more. For lower calicial stone, you can see the fiber with 200. In this, in this, uh, you use the, the axis sheet just in two cases. In two cases. Sorry, but the, 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 are your slides on the on the computer? There's yes. No slides. Ask the panel, uh, the, the audience, because I don't see the slides ah, yes. on my computer. Please share it Excuse with me. us, because you are ah, only okay. you ha we hear you, but only yes, we yes. hear you. We want the slides, please. Excuse me. Excuse me. I will, excuse me. Good now? It's good? Is it is good? Very good, Professor. Thank you. Excuse me. Okay. I can, yes. So I can, yes. The material I use is cytoscopy single use for more for Pusen. So I told about the, 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 the laser use it is uh, olmium, luminous, 1.5 to 20. And for the stone or the pelvic or the calis upper calicia, not to get severe deflection of the otoscope, the favor it is, is 300. For lower calicia stone is uh, 200. Now, you can just use two access sheets for two patients. Uh, all the patients from urethra preparation, you have, because you have academic for, for purpose associate with us, I have a team who have to, to respect time step in order to have to avoid complication. So it is a good idea to have some, some, some step to respect. So all the patients who have uh, in some preparation for the stone uh, by uh, WG in, uh, in the beginning. But now you just do cytoscopy similarly what I, I told my friend, and we begin. We don't have to, to do a, a stand before. But in the beginning, for the academic and for learning, you must do that. So the, 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 the control, the, the result will be evaluated by the, the, by the, by the, 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 the scan control. So you have 32 cases for, for stone lithiasis. Uh, the indication word uh, in the first line word, word to, uh, the first first uh, line is the otoscopy sopel. Uh, so you have some three cases. We have the stone residual stone. You can do it by little tripsy extra corporeal. All the patient have stay. The majority can go in the same day, in the in day surgery. The, but uh, you have the, the the success is over the 1930. You have uh, small complication. One with, with infection. And because the stone was infected, uh, and before the, 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 the check, you have checking for the bacteria was negative, but you know that some cases with negative uh, uh, bacteria at the urine, you can see the, 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 the sepsis after uh, fragmentation. Uh, so some two cases for the pain, and one immaturia with this follow-up, it will be good. This is some, can see you the view with, the, with this uh, uh, poison system, the, is, is good. In the beginning, you can do the small screen, but you can do it in the in the the, the, the big screen in the, in the, at the operating room. This is stone at the calicial upper with fragmentation, and you can do a, a big screen. The advantage for for our digital image is avoid uh, some 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 uh, complication some advantage to have to use it. It's a good. You can do maximum two-way active deflection for each cases, and you can uh, you cannot do for a, a sterilization or processing and to lose the time and uh, and lose the, the cost. Uh, infection control is ve is very very controlled because you have no uh, no you can you can avoid infection and the cost will be you can see after uh, that is the same for the 
the convolutional erythroscope. For about some study for what convolutional audiology, you can see that that the, the digital image is the same, and you can see if you see this uh, uh, with fiber optic otoscope, you can see the, ima the image is is the good. The same. You can see the good view. This is very important thing. This is for durability, and you can you can see for the compensator scope. You can to you cannot use it for many time, and you can do some reparation. And the cost for this, this is why you can use it uh, for the uh, single use is very very good. So you see that evolution when you can use some otoscope, uh, not uh, single use, with the time you can some lost some 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 superiority some quality. And you see that this is dependent for surgical technique, for experience, for sterile procession, for the uh, the institution, and for a trainer resident a resident trainer, we, uh, and case complex uh, complex. This is why in our experience, for we have anti, one team for two professors who are doing just a stone, and in the beginning, if you have just otoscope uh, convolution, you cannot do you cannot do progress, but with single use. You have rapid, rapid, uh, the learning curve is very short. Is after three months, you are independent. You can do any, any stone and in, in, in quick time and without complication. Because you, you, the use, a single use, you cannot have some to, to have some complication or to, to break the, 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 the otoscope. And you can do the some challenge cases. And this is a good thing for, for to, to, to train and for department to have some team, team to doing good stone. Uh, do some advantage is mini invasive concept for breakage. Uh, navigation angle is the same, it's very good. And you can, some cases, difficult you can do it. And uh, you can increase laser power because you can, if you see, you can see, you can have some injury for the otoscope, but with, but for, for uh, your single use, you cannot have some lost money and it can go uh, hit. This is if many advantages for this. This is you can uh, win from the procedure time, from the operation room time, from the hospital stay. And one very important thing is the infection. When you have single use, and you see, you know, that in endoscopy, neurology, you have many infections, nosocomial infection, because you can use some, 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 some instrument. So with this, you cannot need for other instrument, and you have and you, can do, you cannot have some infection. And the infection is very costly because the patient can be, can be one week or two week or have sepsis and die. If you, if you see about course reparation, if can comparison is the same, right? if the same, but uh, with, with single use, you, you can, you can uh, in some institution, we can use it every, uh, every time and many uh, uh, number for person you can uh, uh, you can win the, uh, uh, the money. Now, the, the cost for this, so this is uh, that, you, that you know, no, it's comparable with, with, with the same. If you see, but you can give you some advantage to have no infection and to have the, for the team to progress and to, have, to do the, the, the challenge cases. This is a, some, donc, some, some experience for, for other, other country. Uh, or the, the register is the, the it's, uh, the, it's 100, 960, 80 cases. You have the win many, many pathologic for stone, for structure, for tumor. It's, it says you can do many things with, with, with uh, this uh, single use. And you can see the, the scope are particularly useful in treating difficult cases. Actually, says there is less concern for otoscopy dommage. This is a very, very, very important thing. You do it and can see it with, to progress rapidly and to do many, many cases. This is a same, you, you can talk about, uh, you can do this, this, uh, this uh, procedure. If you have, if you have some uh, politic in your academic and you want, you have experience in our academy, now you stop doing just some cases you can do the conventional microscope and similarly for the attention in the beginning. But in uh, all, we will see now the, the, mini, the, the cases, all the cases will be used by single use. And you see that 
the cause is the cause is very very not very important and it's the same or you cannot uh, break some endoscope is very expensive if you have not some views this is it's very uh, it's not uh, uh, heavy and you can use it very quickly and it's very for the assistant and and as well you can do it and learn it very rapidly you can do many deflection as you see passive and active you have many challenge and this with the challenge 9.2 you can do uh, uh, 112 you can do many tank you can do laser you can do it's very accessible for the other what you see anatomy by my friend uh, Ahmed you can see see that the resolution is the same and you can better than the, when you do the resolution line the same for uh, the camera this also look is, is the same for deflection you have you can do access for all calicell and for using the fluorat it's uh, you can use it you can do good vision you can you can do the 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 the, 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 the empty donc it's, it's the basket can use it and you can do many you can do it by conventional endoscope but some disadvantage is uh, if decrease for image quality compared to for the endoscope and for uh, you single use you can see the good image the cost but is dependent for the volume you can use it from the cases and uh, and for the competition for the market in the future will be will be a low cost Adv but advantage for uh, this of endoscope is uh, you can you can uh, uh, new scope each cases and you can have uh, you can use it for the some difficult cases we don't uh, uh, take it for the damage no repair cost uh, and uh, you have you can avoid the processing for for sterilization and for uh, for processing for for uh, preparation for the otoscope and you can take it with you anywhere but you can use it for for large uh, large or medium stone uh, with complex renal anatomy this is for uh, for the if if you want to uh, uh, some uh, some way to use a disposal otoscope you have large stone under than one centimeter or multi flower pole stone so with complex anatomy large stone burden and tortuous anatomy causing immunocompression in person with mutual drug resistance and presence of case delay uh, you can do it so i think i will so rapidly the, i do my presentation i am waiting for some question okay thank you very much professor Ravier. Uh, already we have one question for you, but we'll start with the poll and then we'll return to the question. It's a okay. very nice uh, lecture you have presented. Thank you very much. Uh, the poll with us, now we have uh, the other poll for you. There are questions. I'm trying to launch it. Just a minute. And uh, we we'll see. So, we have in your clinical practice uh, for this, for the audience. Uh, yes. Uh, this is for the audience. Then we'll turn to your questions. In your clinical practice, how, how do often you use excess sheath? Uh, no, this is the same, uh, the same questions. I'm yes. sorry, the other poll is not ready for me now. I will start with the questions with you. This is a question for both of you. I will start with you. Uh, yes. In a clinical practice, who, uh, maybe uh, I had answered it, but uh, you need also to answer it. Uh, yes, uh, yes. We you can, can use uh, it. You the, have the the question on our side? Or you do not have I think, it? I, uh, I think you, you are working about, uh, talking about uh, if you use or not the, yes. the Axe sheet. The Axe sheet. Yes. Yes. You, you, just in two cases, you cannot need it. You can do by otoscope symmetry, like I had. You can use it in yes. the first of, with five minutes, and you have dilatation, and you can go out. Okay. So, so the answer is that. And uh, for Doctor Ayad, what was your answer, please? I actually, think you write it. Yes. By actually, uh, you, with the, with the all benefits we know uh, related to using uh, ureteric access sheets. I, I am fan of using uh, ureteric access sheets routinely. 
uh, especially okay. in big size, especially in big size of the stones. And when you expect multiple um, uh, go, uh, going inside and coming back with the fragments. So it is better to maintain also um, a stable intrarenal uh, pressure. So that's why I use a uretric access sheets routinely. So now we have two opinions, and this is very good because the, the audience will be benefited from both the ideas and they will can they can uh, have their experience any more questions from our uh, audience the participants please before we conclude our uh, session here i want to add something uh, yes please uh, you, you, f because you are doing every time dusting dusting this is why yes. not, you cannot need dietation uh, access sheet this is why in our experience for this okay so you are preparing when you do dusting, you cannot use the, the yes. access sheet. Yes. Okay. Yes, because you are, you are experienced in this and you practice it more so that you have your way in dealing with the uh, patient and his stones. Any more questions for the uh, audience? Uh, uh, for me, I will ask you a question, uh, Professor Rabia, I will, before we conclude. Yes. Uh, in your opinion, what, your, uh, what do you prefer using now in your practice in uh, Morocco? Are you using uh, the single use or using the reusable? I, I know you have the both and all one yes. is, has its indication. But for your, uh, from your experience and you work along, I know that you, you work a lot uh, on this uh, endurology uh, procedures. Which one you prefer to use now? Now you, you move at single use. Because uh, I see you. that, yes, 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 absolutely. But you know that I the keep... cost is more high, but you use it because of uh, less yes. infection, less sterilization, yes. less repair, less th something like that. Yes, that. Absolutely. I think that. Yes. And for you, Professor uh, Ayad, what do you think? The same question applied to you, please. Yes, actually, and I have Because also... you are working out nine years in, in the, in the, in the real uh, field. Yes. yes. Uh, so I want to ask I have... you about this. Yeah, I have both, but in, for the last maybe two years, I use only single use. Single use. For the yeah. same reasons that uh, Professor Rabia uh, yes. Uh, yes. is giving. Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, now actually, we have you, don't, you, don't have, you don't have stress thinking about sterilization, thinking about uh, damage of the scope. Uh, you do use, use the scope, then throw it. Uh, so uh, that is, I think, uh, and of course, you have a very good image quality. Uh, everything you need, it's available in single use. Absolutely. Okay. This is a question, I think, for you, uh, uh, Professor Ayad, because Dr. Ravi, not to use dilator because he just for, uh, come in a flexible uh, check, uh, flexible uh, rigid cystoscope and semi rigid and go. Uh, the one uh, from Ron, Ron Lee, a question Is it pre op dilatation a routine when you do rears? This is, I think, for uh, you, this question, Ayad. Yes, dilatation, dilatation is non, not routine because sometimes when you pass the um, guide wire, just look and evaluate how the ureteric orifice is it raising the the is there is a space below the guide wire or no you can go with the rigid ureteroscope and evaluate you the ureter if the ureter is tight no need for dilatation just put a stent and no harm of putting a stent and coming after 12 days maximum mm -hmm. dilatation passive dilatation will occur and the patient is safe and you are safe so uh, forceful, uh, I am not a very big fan of forceful dilatation because this is mechanical and there is no elasticity, as I mentioned, in the lower part of the ureter. So uh, it is not a routine. Yeah. And one advantage so, for... One uh, advantage sorry, for... Professor Rabia, yes, please. One advantage for no, no use in dilatation, this is you cannot use its scope. You cannot use its scope, you can do it. This is one advantage you can do it in our practice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any more questions from the participants, please, before we conclude? Okay. Now I would like to thank all the audience for their time to, to attend this webinar. And I want to, uh, to uh, many thanks to uh, Professor Ravier Radwan and thank Professor you. Ayad Imad for their nice presentations. They give us a lot of information and many ideas we can get benefit from it in our practice, especially I'm speaking about Iraq here because we are now starting using uh, increasingly the single use uh, flexible URS. And so we need 
you need the experience from other uh, from other colleagues that they use it for many many years so that we can avoid complications and avoid the uh, uh, harm to the patient and everything will be in the benefit of the patient and i would like to thank all the uh, Post and company who are uh, and uh, especially David and uh, many many of the his colleagues in the company to allow us to get this webinar today and we we'll hope we we'll see you again uh, for many many occasions because of this COVID era we are using the uh, virtual uh, webinars so that we can uh, meet together and avoid uh, uh, traveling to uh, distant places. Thank you again. I'm your Thank host, you. Dr. Nikas Al Hamdani, uh, professor and consultant urologist, and the president of the Iraq Urology Association and the president of the Arab Board of Urology. Thank you very much, and have a nice okay. time. Stay safe, stay stay away, and stay home. Thank you, and God bless you all. And Thank have you. a good afternoon Th and a good evening for those who are in the far east of the, uh, of our continent. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Thank you, Nibras. Thank you, Nibras. And my friend, it is a pleasure to share with you. And uh, we thanks our Pusen for this uh, webinar. And uh, uh, see you uh, as soon as. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank, you, you, so much. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to, uh, to be together with you today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Professor Ayad. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.